Let's just say it was not all beer and skittles at the start of the late colonial period, 1839. The Whig governor, Richard Burke, had left the colony and the new governor, Sir George Gibbs, had just started settling in to His Excellency's chair. Hi, I'm Michael Bischel, Australian historical fiction writer here again. And we now jump into the late colonial period. According to newspapers at the time, including mostly the Sydney Herald and the Australian, New South Wales, especially the country areas, were alive with crime. By about the middle of 1839, there was a real struggle between the law of the land with its culture and values and the laws of the interior. In Sydney, a bit like today, the problems in the country were not given proper consideration by many. Today we have the daily news on all its fronts and there's the social media to let us know what's happening in our vast country areas. And yet also today I guess country people still really believe that city folk don't understand their, their own dilemmas and their own challenges now, for example, we can reference the, the latest water disputes and drought and other issues that plague and worry our country people. Yet, in the start of the late colonial period, as communication was just about non-existent, people in the towns really didn't know about the bush and the horrors therein. In all the outlying districts, and I quote from newspapers at the time, feverish and murderous convicts and ex-convicts pillaged the countryside, while drunken policemen dallied with female convicts of prepossessing appearance. There you go. Bush rangers and armed groups of ruffians terrorised the countryside, from the Liverpool Plains to Australia Felix, plundering houses and robbing drays and stations at pleasure. Charming stuff. Quoting the newspapers again, up in the New England, one-eyed Tom held the district to ransom. On the Upper Hunter, Opossum Jack, a runaway from a government gang, pursued his source of depredation for two years, two years, while desperate characters intimidated the settlers on the Bathurst Plains, the Wellington Valley, the Monaro, the Riverina, Australia Felix and Gippsland. Pretty heavy stuff. Back in the cities or the towns, it was not uncommon to find an ignorant child who did not know what the Bible was. While today there is a lot of talk about the way the Europeans treated the indigenous, resulting in death and starvation, it has to be said and noted that murder and savagery occurred from both sides, including cannibalism reportedly done by a party of Monero Aborigines. Now, at the time there were well-meaning and well-intentioned people who believed that the, the answer to ignorance, to bring people into the light, was to get these children into a, a, a firm of religious belief and thus encouraging them to profess brotherly love. Now, a bit like our modern times, there were big distinctions between the towns, especially Sydney and the bush. Not just in distance, but also in employment, standard of living, relatively and future prospects. Unlike today where the heaviest employment and the greater opportunities for advancement and salary lie within the cities of our country, especially on the East Coast, in the start of the late colonial period, 1839, it was generally the opposite. Sydney and Melbourne to a lesser degree, they were just starting to feel the pinch of towns which were, which were growing and yet which did not have a corresponding manufacturing or business base. To supply employment and income for services, and yes, good old tax for the government, which at the time was in its infancy in terms of levelling a tax. Recession was starting to hit Sydney and Melbourne. Growth was slow and yet in the country there were still opportunities, especially in the wool industry, and in grazing and general agricultural cultivation. Now there was work there for everybody on the land. This was not to say that country people were necessarily wealthier than town people, 
but there was more opportunity to earn a quid. So this is a little bit of background to, to whet your appetite to this new period we'll look at, the late colonial period. Keep an eye out in the days ahead for highlights. Bye for now.